Hello, I'm Gordon Lane, editor of CameraLabs.com. I'd like to give you a brief video tour around the Nikon D90. Here it is, the D90. This is the successor to the Nikon D80, which was one of the most popular mid-range digital SLRs on the market over the past couple of years. Now externally, the new D90 very much resembles its predecessor, and that's no bad thing. It means the D90 inherits excellent design and build quality. This camera feels very, very comfortable in your hands, and all of the controls fall under your fingers in exactly the right places. The D90 also has pretty much the same viewfinder, which means it's big and bright, and features on-demand grid lines that you can simply switch on and off in the menu. It also has the same 11-point autofocus system, although the D90 now also adds a 3D tracking option. But of course there are many new features to the D90, including of course that movie recording facility. So now without further ado, let's take a look at some of its highlights. First of all, there's an increase in resolution from 10.2 to 12.3 megapixels. That's exactly the same resolution as the Semi-Pro D300 model, although the D90 does only support 12-bit processing. If you buy the D90 in the kit, you'll also get it with a new DX 18-105mm lens. Now that may be 30mm shorter than the 18-135 that was bundled with the D80, but crucially this new model now features vibration reduction to help counteract for camera shake. Owners of other Nikkor lenses will be pleased to know the D90 also still features a built-in AF motor, so if you've got any of those older lenses, they'll still autofocus on the D90. Around the back of the camera you'll find a larger and much more detailed 3-inch VGA screen. Now on the D90 you can additionally use this for live view, and as you can see here, it also features face detection autofocus. Continuous shooting is now 50% faster. It used to be 3 frames per second on the D80, and now it's 4.5 frames per second on the D90. Here's how that sounds. The D90 also becomes the world's first DSLR to record video, complete with sound, and in nothing less than the high definition 720p format. I'll be talking more about that and showing you some demonstrations later on in the video, but right now, let's take a closer look at some of the D90's controls. Externally, the new D90 very much resembles its predecessor, although look just above the logo here and you'll notice three dots. Behind there is the built-in microphone for the movie mode. Turning to the upper left side of the body, you'll see the main command dial, with the usual shooting modes and scene presets. In the middle of the body, you'll find a pop-up flash and a hot shoe for external flash guns. The upper right side of the body is dominated by this large information screen. This is very easy to view whether you're in direct sunlight or in darker conditions, and around it you'll notice direct buttons for adjusting various options like the autofocus mode, the drive mode, the exposure compensation, or the metering. And like the D80 before it, you'll see the D90 has both a finger dial and a thumb dial, making it very easy to change lots of settings. Around the back of the camera to the right of the screen, you'll notice two of the new buttons over its predecessor, one dedicated to firing up the live view mode, that I'll be showing you in just a moment, and below there, the info button. Press that, and the D90 will give you a wealth of shooting information here. Press the info button once more, and you'll see this bar at the bottom become highlighted. This is the quick access bar, which as its name suggests, gives you very quick access to the following settings. Things like assigning the function button, or perhaps the exposure lock button. To the side of the camera, behind this door, you'll find the memory card slot. And the D90, like its predecessor, takes SD memory. Below the body, the battery compartment. Here, the rechargeable lithium-ion pack. Although, notice that if you are going to be using live view, and especially that movie mode, make sure you carry a spare, because it does eat through the battery quite quickly. Finally, to the side of the body, you'll find this flap hiding the various ports. At the top here, a DC input. Next to that, a USB output. Here, an AV port. Notice the addition of A for audio, that's for the video mode. And next to that, an HDMI port for connection to high-definition TV sets. And finally, just under here, an additional port for connecting either an optional cable release or the optional GPS accessory that clips to the top of the D90. Like most new DSLRs, the D90 is equipped with live view facilities. That's an upgrade over its predecessor, and the implementation is also a bit simpler than previous Nikon DSLRs. To enter live view, you simply press the LV button to the top right corner of the screen. Now you'll see the live view in front of the camera, and to prove that, I'll just wiggle my fingers in front of the lens. Now you'll notice in the top right corner of the screen an actual time remaining indicator. 
This shows you how much filming time you've got if you are now going to put the D90 into video recording. And I'll show you more about that in just a moment. For now though, let's see what graphics you can overlay on the screen. If I press the info button to the bottom right corner, you'll see you can switch off that superimposed information. Press it once more and you can overlay an alignment grid. Press it again though and you're back to that first screen. Unfortunately, there's no live histogram on the D90. In terms of autofocus during live view on the D90, it's a contrast based system only, so there's none of that mirror flipping up and down with the noise and interruption to the image. However, contrast based systems can be quite slow. Here's how it works in practice, and have a look at that square in the middle that's coloured red. If I half press the shutter release button to autofocus, you'll see that frame now turn green to indicate that it is in focus, but you'll also notice that it took a few seconds to do so. What you can do with a contrast based system though is just move this square to a different area if you'd prefer to focus on that instead. Here we go again. Again, that took a few seconds. The D90 also allows you to place this frame over any area you want and magnify it to actually see what's going on. If I press the magnify button in the bottom left corner of the screen we can take a closer look at this area. Here we are at the maximum magnification and again you can auto focus at this point or use this mode as manual focus assistance. Now I'm just turning the manual focusing ring on the lens and as you can see it's possible to get that pretty pretty close. The headline grabbing new feature of the Nikon D90 is its movie recording mode and it in fact becomes the very first DSLR in the world to offer the facility. You're watching an example of it right now. I'm stood about two feet in front of the Nikon D90 and you're watching video and audio recorded by the camera. To start recording video on the D90, first of all put it into live view mode, then simply press the OK button to start recording and the OK button to stop again. The following sequences were all filmed using the D90's HD movie mode and all using the standard kit lens. Know that once you do start filming a video with the D90 though it becomes manual focus only. This first sequence was taken from a tripod and it looks fairly smooth. You can of course manually zoom the lens while you're filming but it's difficult to do so smoothly so sometimes it's best to just crash in and out quickly. Much more effective are when you're actually exploiting the D90's potentially shallow depth of field. This allows you to focus from one subject to another as I'm doing here and this is something that's very difficult to achieve with a normal camcorder. Here's another example of the same effect although notice the banding in the background due to the artificial light. This banding is in this clip again and if you are interested in that shallow depth of field it's best to use a lens with a brighter focal ratio. Another trick is to manually focus on a fixed point and let the action come to you. Here I've manually focused on the point very close to the camera and as the subject gets closer it becomes sharper. Now where the D90's movie mode doesn't work so well is when you're trying to hand hold it and also zoom while you're filming. That's what I'm trying to do here and you can see it's very difficult to hold the camera steady while zooming and there's also some very undesirable motion artifacts. Those are due to the D90's rolling shutter and we've got a full explanation of how that works in our review at cameralabs.com. The Nikon D90 is a feature packed mid-range DSLR that inherits a number of aspects from the Semi-Pro D300 while also throwing in a few fairly unique qualities of its own. It also brings the earlier D80 bang up to date with all the latest gadgetry. So over the D80 you get a couple of extra megapixels, a larger and more detailed VGA screen with live view facilities, faster continuous shooting and of course that movie mode. Now, as you saw a moment ago, the movie mode is not without its limitations, and certainly if you were to shoot with it as you would a normal camcorder, you'll invariably be disappointed. But use it properly and you can get some really nice effects. It should also be pointed out though that as a traditional stills camera, the D90 handles really beautifully and is capable of delivering some excellent results. Perhaps its biggest problem though is the other cameras that are available at the same price range. For the same money as the D90, you could alternatively buy the faster and tougher Canon EOS 40D, or perhaps the Pentax K20D that has high resolution and also weatherproofing, not to mention built-in image stabilization. So as always, if you're thinking about buying this camera, you have to really carefully weigh up the various features. Which ones do you really need in practice? Now to help you do that, we've compared the D90 against its key rivals in our full review at cameralabs.com. There you'll also see comparisons in terms of image quality and resolution, and also noise levels. So to find out if the D90 is the ideal mid-range digital SLR for you, then head on over to our full review. You'll find it, as always, at www.cameralabs.com.